Well, I'm back. We're back. Uh, didn't really get into a lot of detail what we, we were going to be doing this big project thing, um, but we took a trip 4,000 miles on the road and um, not going to say what all we were doing there and things. Uh, basically just you know going to see different family members and things and we had some stuff that was uh, out in Iowa and in Pennsylvania where I'm from. Iowa's where my wife's from and uh, we needed to go get things and you know visit with people and whatever else and so uh, that's what we were doing. Um, we left what two weeks ago I guess today two weeks ago and like I said all total um, total trip was about you know 3,800 to 3,900 miles somewhere in there and then local driving uh, was you know a little bit further and um, so all total right around 4,000 miles plus or minus a, a little bit there a lot of driving in two weeks uh, there was a whole lot of driving and uh, of course very taxing on all of us and um, so but uh, you say what did you drive well um, I'll show you a picture of a very unique uh, our unique camper if you want to call it that uh, here's a picture of it this is out in Iowa we took a picture of it um, this is our uh, old ambulance fire rescue truck and uh, I talked a little bit about that um, before on, on Patreon, but I haven't really said much about it publicly. But we bought this old thing. It's a lot cheaper than a than a motorhome, and uh, we pulled a enclosed trailer and um, that we've had for some time, and you know to put get some stuff that we needed and, and put it in there. But uh, big diesel motor and, and things, so it does really good on the on the road, on the highways, and and uh, really ran good. And then we had some place where we could sleep in in the back of the thing, and and uh, so real good vehicle, uh, definitely a lot more affordable than like I said a motorhome or even some really nice vans out there and, and whatever. So um, it's good. It did really good. I had to take a picture of this too. This is a uh, uh, in Ohio. There was this road sign for Bryan, Ohio, and um, you know, and then Chicago. You can see underneath it there. And uh, kind of a little bit upset about that because I was never invited to the, you know, ceremony where they named the town after me. But that's okay, I guess. That's a joke there, you know. <laughs> Secondly, I'm going to be showing some videos of uh, some things in Pennsylvania. I shot some more video in Pennsylvania than I did in other areas. Uh, just because I wanted to show not only my wife but our son uh, some things um, from my past. Uh, just a kind of a trip down memory lane, so to speak. So we went, first of all, to Strasburg Railroad, where I worked for five years, from 1989 to 1993, as a young man, and uh, before a lot of you were even born. That's an interesting thing. Uh, you know, in other words, I, I quit working there before some of you were, were even born. But, uh, so we went to Strasburg Railroad. I'm going to put the video clips in. And uh, we rode the train. It was pretty neat seeing it all again. Here at the Strasburg Railroad. Walking along, I'm going to go get some tickets. This other one, look to the left. 58. Yeah, number 58. Boarding the train. Red 
caboose hotel, which my Uncle Don built back was before I was born, but I went there quite a bit growing up. Yeah, and then the Guinness Book of World Records. And I played a lot at that place. There was their house back there. Don and Aunt Lois. So, yep. They didn't include any video of the restaurant there, the dining car restaurant, because it was totally changed. It used to be you'd walk in and there was the, the counter where you would order and then the kitchen was back in behind it and kind of went around that way. Now it's all dining room there and now the kitchen's off to the left when you walk in where people used to sit and eat. It's kind of weird. Um, but then we, after that, as I said you know, in the little video clips there, I showed the red caboose in that my uncle, Don Denlinger, uh, had founded. And uh, so we went there, and again, I used to be there a lot when I was a little boy, like I said, and, um, you know, it was kind of strange going there after so many years, um, you know, over 20 years, you know, actually more than 20 years for Red Caboose, and when I used to go there, my grandmother would be in the gift shop, and we'd go to see Grandma and things, and Grandma Denlinger, and, you know, she died uh, many years ago, um, probably late 1990s, I think is when Grandma uh, went home to be with the Lord. I do believe she was saved. But uh, I'll show you some of the interior of this. Here we are at the Red Caboose. Look at the name of that one. Oh, the Maine Central or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Maine, there's Alaska. Yeah, it's my Uncle Don built this. So I used to hang out here when we'd come here when I was little. New York Central. Yep. And we stayed here. Are, they, are these even being used anymore? They look like they're in pretty rough shape. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I have no idea. It's been so long since I've been involved here at all. I have no that idea. There's an old barn where Tom used to paint. Yeah, I'm going to pull it and write guys backing out. I have a red caboose from hotel. This has changed a lot. Boy. Huh. Wow, it's changed. There's one of Grandpa's paintings. Pretty interesting. Oh. Yeah, see, that was there. That train thing was there. But, uh, used to be at the front of the train in here, too. But, yeah, I remember Grandma, she'd be here, in here doing things. Uh, doing the cash register and all that. It's really kind of strange to see, too, that my uncle's house, my aunt and uncle's house that was there at the Red Caboose, actually is now part of the tourist, you know, attraction thing. It's, really strange to see that. Uh, next, I'm gonna show you something very interesting here. Um, the house that I was, I wasn't born there, I was born in the hospital, Lancaster General Hospital, but the house where I grew up for the first three years of my life. I'm gonna show you some video of that on Peach Lane down in Ronks, 
there in Lancaster County. Here's some video of that. This is the road I grew up on, Peach Lane. You go left here, up the hill. Oh man, this is bumpy. I didn't know, I just yep. wanted to take right, time. Right there is the house where I was not born, but go ahead. The birthplace of Brian Denninger, right there. And then, next up here, 60 Peach Lane. That's where we should right live there. before we moved up where we are oh, now. Back in there, that's where I grew up. Dick For Henry's. a long time. Now the Lintons were there. Henry's were, were or no, was it the Henry's that lived there? Yeah, the first house. Originally. Yeah. Right. Oh, they're dropping our mail off. How to get that quick? Uh huh. They're Dave and Peggy Eisenberger. Yeah, places for sale. Well, Martin's in later on, but so that's weird. This is really weird. All righty. And uh, Roar up. Farm was it up here at the end? Water Roar, yeah. Yeah, Water Roar. So, yep. So there you have it. They still haven't put the historical plaque out there, whatever birthplace of Brian Denlinger. I don't know when they're going to, but they'll get around to it. After, see, they just got done, you know, the nation just got done naming a town in Ohio for me. So now they got to wait, you know, save up a little bit till they can afford the big brass plaque, you know, that says this is where he was born. <laughs> but uh, having some fun there. We didn't go back the lane, back to the place where I, you know, lived for... Uh, we lived there from, oh boy, what would that be? 1978 to 2001 is how long I was back there um, at the lane that goes back in. And some Amish bought it now, and they changed everything all around, so it doesn't really look like my old house anymore. But the other one there, the little brick rancher, yeah, that looked like the house I was raised in for the first three years. Um, but it was a real beautiful location there. But now, um, even more important to me than the houses that I was raised in, uh, I lived almost down in the woods um, behind the houses. We call it the springs because it's the Strasburg watershed. They have a bunch of natural springs down there that are capped off with concrete, you know, little structures. And then the spring water goes and they, they bring it down into the town of Strasburg, you know, as the, as the water supply there. And ever since I was a little boy, I'd be back there all the time at the little, you know, the springs they overflow and then they go down to this little stream that goes down through. And I'd be back there building little dams and, you know, putting rocks up and damming up the water. And, and then I'd catch crayfish and I'd catch minnows and salamanders and I'd, I'd stock my little pond that I created. And I was down there all the time and, you know, my brothers and, brothers and sisters as well. So I went down there and it was pretty neat because it was actually not changed. So I was, it was nice to see it. so much has changed down there where I grew up. It was nice to actually go down and actually see things exactly the way it was when I was a little boy. So here's some video of that. Here we are down in the woods behind the house where I grew up. You can still see some of the big beech trees right there. Real huge big beech trees. Batula, no it's Batula Lenta is, is black birch I think. Or, or birch. But yeah. Um, I guess Grandifolia I think maybe is beech. But anyways, this is the this is the forest that I grew up in. And this was the old spring that I remember growing up. And uh, this big old beech tree right here. That was there when I was a little boy. And I'm obviously there a lot farther back than that. And there's my brother. Let go, Oliver. T.D. <laughs> Tom Denlinger. And uh, right there is his initials. Um, I don't think I carved my initials on this tree, but it is an old, old tree. And then you go over here. Hey, it is still flowing. Would you look at that? It is still flowing. I can't believe it. And there it is. I built. I built many little little dams in this creek growing up. This is where I'd come and play as a little boy right there and we'd times we'd take pieces of bark and divert it over and fill up this little 
concrete thing here. I remember doing that. But yep. Interesting. Well, this is it. Here I am down at what we used to call the springs because right there is a spring pipe. And uh, but this is the creek I played in as a little boy. And uh, our house was, you don't have to swing the camera around, but our house was up that way. And uh, we'd walk down through the woods. I'd walk down here by myself. And I just lived down here in these, in these woods. And I'd hike all around up through. There's a pine forest up that way. And uh, a lot of these trees, I'll just go this way. You can see this tree was here when I was little. All right, big tulip poplar tree. Uh, just amazing. So really a neat thing to be down here in these woods again where I was raised. You can hear the Stratford Railroad off in the distance. So really neat. All right, next I'm going to show you one of the areas I used to ride my bicycle to. There was a little store in the town of Nickel Mines, which was a couple miles away from my childhood home there on Peach Lane. And Nickel Mines is, became famous because of this uh, sick nut, this uh, Charlie Roberts, I think his name was, that uh, he went into this Amish schoolhouse and he shot up a bunch of little girls and whatever was going to molest them and things, and then they just destroyed the school. So I'm going to show you where the school was, and I'll tell you a little funny story about the swimming pool, the public pool, after you watch this. Alrighty, here we are in Nickel Mines. I used to ride my bicycle over here. And that, there's a horsey. There, that field right there, right in here, is where that shooting was, the Amish, Amish schoolhouse shooting. There's a swimming pool that we were members of. When I was little, we come to that. I'm and, not. Uh, yeah. And there's the, where the school, or the uh, store used to be. Yeah, Nickel Mine store, that's weird. <laughs> that's gone. Weird. All right. Then we turn up here and go to church. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you saw the swimming pool was actually right across the road from where the old schoolhouse used to be. And the one time we were there in the summer, and I remember we got there, and it was just they were just opening up, and all the people were coming in and putting their beach towels down, and you know, children getting ready, and a couple of children jumped into the pool, and they almost right back out again just shot back out again and they're screaming oh, it's, oh there's you know this i could hear hear him yelling and and here i heard one of them say there's a dead groundhog in that pool and uh sure enough they got that the big pool net thing you know and they they fished out this groundhog that i guess had fallen into the water at the, the, that night sometime and it was dead is down in the bottom floating you know so uh real good you know real fun to swim in so I think they closed it for the day, you know, to kind of get the system cleaned out, I guess. But yeah, I remember the dead groundhog in that thing. But where the pool was, there was a, there was kind of a, looked like a big kind of lake back in there. That was actually the nickel mine, and it had flooded. But uh, the store is just like I showed you in the video there. It's some kind of manufacturing thing or whatever now. Not even the little country store that used to be there. And they'd have candy and whatever, and we'd go in there with our allowance, and we'd buy candy and things and we ride our bicycles over there from our place on Peach Lane. So next I'm going to show you the Babel building that I was raised in, Calvary Monument Bible Church. I went there all my life up until the time I was in my teens and I left. And uh, so um, this is where I had my first false profession of faith, um, where I was using a New American Standard Bible as a little boy and then graduated to a NIV, you know, Real good graduation there. And uh, so I'll show you the video of it. Here it is. All right, we are approaching Calvary Monument Bible Church. I guess it's, yeah, I guess it's still, it's still, yep. it's still called that. Yep. Should be called some kind of thing like Super Energy Church or something, you know, like most are today. This is where I grew up. Going here. Amish kids walking through it. Just go down around the parking lot there. And, uh, and now just kind of pull over here a little bit. That big cell an antenna right there. Good night. But the original building, 
well not the really really old building but the original stop 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 thank you the original building was that one right there right this over here right then yeah and then they had it over here then Lefevre they built Hall. then they built this wing and then they built Lafever Hall over there huh. and uh but then the original one, I guess, isn't even around anymore, right? No, that was torn. It's a, if it's, you drive around the front there, that's where it was in the other side of this yeah. building. So, yeah. Alrighty. Uh, the people there are going to have a lot to answer for because they deceived a lot of people. Um, it was interesting. The pastor, when I was there growing up, was Bob Reed. And um, a friend of the family came over the one time. He had an old sermon from Bob Reed. And we put that thing in. It wasn't five minutes into that sermon, and he was correcting the King James Bible and giving a better reading from the NIV and the New American Standard Version. Just totally wicked. I was not raised King James only, in other words. Next, we're going to show, I'm going, I'm going to show uh, some video of the Gap Town Clock. Um, Calvary Monument Bible Church, and then you go down towards the, the town of Gap, over towards where I went to high school, which I'll show after that but gap was i had some friends that were down in there and things and an interesting story about the mcdonald's watch this all right we are in the town of gap pa and there is the gap town clock right over there again a lot of uh history there this is a lot of the area where i used to be around that was impressive yeah. I'm going to get one of those tomorrow. I enjoy wasting but, gas and rubber in the tires. Yeah. Sure. That's great. <laughs> so that's a, that was oh, a tattoo parlor. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that used to be an antique place. I was going to just say about that's where that shipwright's draw knife was, and I missed buying it and then came back and it wasn't there. Now it's a tattoo parlor. Oh, that's good. Antiques to tattoos. Yeah, great. And this is the infamous Gap McDonald's down here on the right. So many kids worked there during high school. And that's, uh, the older one. that's that place there. There were so many stories of high school kids spitting in food and doing all kinds of other horrible stuff. So <laughs> I remember that. So there you have it. Uh, that was a bad McDonald's to go to. But uh, the interesting story about that I remember the one night we went there after our church thing, Calvary Monument Bible Church. Went there as a family, and my older brother Dean was sitting there, and he was playing with this, this, uh, these little ketchup, little bags, you know, little things that you get, and um, and he's he was twisting it, and there was a family that they were all dressed up from, you know, the church service there, and they were sitting across from us, and they got done with their food, and they left, and hey, see you later, yeah, okay, bye, they left, and my brother's sitting there playing with his ketchup thing, twisting it, and twisting it, and the thing burst and just shot all over that table. <laughs> We thought, oh boy, if those people with their nice fancy clothes would have been there, they'd have got, you know, just sprayed with ketchup. So, but uh, a lot of interesting memories coming back, going back there. So, next I'm going to show you the high school I went to, Peckway Valley High School and uh, the intermediate school. The high school has changed quite a bit. Intermediate school looks the same, at least from the outside. I don't know about the inside. Didn't go in there, but this is where I went to school, public schooling. We are coming up to the high school that I went to at night. Man, that they built this thing way out. Yep, this is your uh, dad's high school he went to. Yep, you can just go in there and turn around. The Peckway Valley main entrance. Yeah, yeah the buses used to pull up here. No, not up here, on the other side. You would know. Yep, yeah, this is all brand new here. That would have been the gym right there, but then this is all new. You mean... This whole thing away? is new. No, I think that they did this right around the time we moved to Maine, but... Oh, okay. This was here. They would... We'd park back in the back, and then you come out here. 2011. And Mr. Hutchinson would... Uh, direct traffic. Yeah, he'd always be there directing traffic in his <laughs> unique way. Yeah. Head up that way. Yes. But this was all parking lot here. This was this whole building here was all parking lot. All students had parked there and everything else. Where are we going? Take a right. Go up to the intermediate school. Buy your yearbook. 
This was all here, this was all here, but they used to park vehicles along here. I remember different teachers parked their vehicles there. And the infamous speed bumps. Yep, the infamous speed bumps. The parking lot's still the same. That equipment building's still the same. Yep. Bus parking only, there's the football team. We had no football when I was going. And then that tennis, tennis court there was still the same. The sewage treatment thing down there is, was there. And some children, some, some of the kids in high school would try to hit the tennis ball down into the sewage treatment plant. I never had any part of that. Uh -huh. I'd, I'd always say, come on guys, uh -huh. now that's wrong. Sure. Well, maybe not, but. Until they turned their heads the other way. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. That little black dome up there is the planetarium. Most pathetic. Nice so, speech be raised behind. Yeah, I know. Well, I tried anyways, didn't I? Um, but, uh, yeah, this is still, looks pretty much unchanged, really. Yeah, it does. I don't think they did anything to the intermediate school. But, yep, this is where I went to school, intermediate and then high school. We have relay races, a summer Olympics or whatever else thing in the, you know, spring, not in the summer, but you'd have to run around the school. <laughs> Remember that. Got third place the one time. You did? Yep, yeah, because there was only three people running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I kid you not. I still have the medal to this day. Third place. Oh well. So there you have it. Um, I can honestly say that uh, going to that public school did not help me um, pretty much in any area of my life, of what I do now and, and what I did after high school and things. It was just a total waste of my time. Um, I know some of the kids that were in my class and whatever else, they quit at different times and it was always kind of, oh, you know, they quit high school. Uh, they were the smart ones, okay? <laughs> Uh, high school is a, is a joke, and that was back in the 1990s, all right, 1980s and 1990s. Okay, I'm 43. I'm an old man, all right. Uh, I graduated in 1994, and it was a joke. I mean, it was a total joke. You know, I cheated on so many of my tests and, and whatever, just lost, you know, professing Christian, church-going, you know, hell-bound sinner is all I was. But... Uh, it was terrible. I look back at that, that whole time. The only thing I got out of high school was my wood shop, um, time in wood shop. Uh, that's where I discovered the talent the Lord gave me for uh, wood turning. And, you know, I ended up, you know, getting into that many years later and actually gave it up going into the ministry. Uh, I can still turn wood, but not for a living. But anyhow, um, next uh, I'm going to show some video of a place where my wife and I lived before Oliver was born. We lived there for a few months. It was an old wood shop that I had built and it was vacant and so we, we needed a place to stay while looking for you know, a place to, to move to. So before we moved to Maine, um, we actually lived in this old wood shop. Very small wood shop, but just you know, gonna show it to you for the purpose of saying that, and I'll say this in the video, but just let me say this, can I preface it with this? And that is that if you want to live debt free, it's possible. All right, you can really, you know, live simply. And uh, so uh, we were, you know, we were tiny house people before it became trendy. So here you go, watch this. All right, well, never showed this on video before, but um, this was actually the place where we stayed. This is my old wood shop um, here in Pennsylvania. We're down, of course, as you figured out by now, we're down visiting. Uh, family and things, getting some things that couldn't take the when we moved up to Maine. Um, but this is my old uh, shop where we lived. For all the people that say, you know, it's impossible to live that free and everything, uh, you know, no, it's not. You can live, but it's a little bit rougher. The back lights are not working for some reason. Or other. But this is my old wood shop in here. Um, the uh, I think it was dreams and near death experiences sermon. I did over here, standing in front of this air conditioner here, this board 
or is in like that. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, but uh, my wife and I spent a few nights peeling this entire cedar log here. That uh, I, I built this this wood shop and uh, my parents' place, and we spent a lot of time with with uh, draw knives and gouges and things like that, wood chisel gouges, you know, and just cleaning this whole cedar tree up. Uh, but yeah, this is where we stayed. It's 16 foot by 16 foot. Our bed was there, refrigerator and stove over there, our little table there, and our, we had a sink, a laundry tub right in there, and um, just whatever we needed. And it works, you know? People have this funny notion that you have to just well, it's just everybody's in debt. You have to be in debt, you know, and whatever else. Now you can, you can get by, you know. And uh, so now we're going to go up to the top of the hill and show you where we used to do the uh, videos up at the top. Of course, I didn't state it in the video, but a lot of our stuff was in storage. So it's not that we had to fit all of our belongings into that little 16 by 16 wood shop. Um, no, we had some things in storage. But uh, it taught us the, the concept of living very small and just getting by with the basics, not having, you know, you know, 10 sets of dishes or something like that and, and whatever else. You just you get by with what you need. Uh, it's a good thing to, to live by. But as I said, as said at the end there, I'm going to go up to where I used to do a lot of the, the preaching in 2013. So here's that video. All right, if you've been following the ministry for a while, you probably recognize this spot somewhat at least. Try to get a little bit of a thing here. I used to preach about near this spot here years and years ago, back in 2012, 2013, more into 2013, spring and summer there. A lot of the older sermons were done up here on this spot. To the uh, my parents' property, the upper part of their property, and. Uh, Lighting's not the best right now, so you can't really see too good over this way. But uh, yeah, this is where I would uh, do a lot of my sermons, my outdoor sermons. Right up here near the power lines, this high voltage power tower thing. Uh, maybe not the best place to do it, but <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, this is where I would do some of the sermons. As we're back down here in Pennsylvania, just thought I'd show this area here. And um, down... Uh, let me just kind of go like this. That's a wildlife park over here. I'm not going to give away the, lo the real location of it or whatever, but my parents' property goes down kind of diagonal over the hill that way. This power tower is in the center of it, uh, the center of the width of it, in other words. So, yeah, this uh, probably looked like a familiar area if you're familiar with the sermons back in 2013. A little bit more recording to do, and then I'll be wrapping this video up. All right, so that's it. Um, just really an interesting thing going back and going through all that, and uh, seeing you know not only where my wife was raised in the house that you know her childhood home, but also we went then from there to West Virginia to visit some family that lives down there now, and um, then we went up to Pennsylvania and went around a lot of the area where I was raised and whatever and and uh, you know it's so interesting because we went through all that stuff and and our son had a really good time but I said to him I said son I said uh, you know did you have a good time and, and whatever and he said I want to go back to Maine <laughs> you know and we're going yeah we do too you know and uh, so came back here to Maine uh, a couple days ago and just exhausted uh, we're still not quite you know, back here, you know, because just so much driving, 4,000 miles is a lot of driving to do in two weeks and um, less than two weeks, actually. But we come back here and everything's covered in snow, you know, it's actually starting to melt pretty good out there because it's up in the mid 40s right now. But uh, just really weird coming back here again after, you know, that much driving and just being away for that much time and and uh, really appreciate what the Lord's done for us and uh, just looking at what we went through in our past and, and uh, just Romans 8 28 all the way all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose 
And I can tell you, just looking at my past, going back and just walking through so much of what I used to be and whatever else, and there were so many times my life just seemed so hopeless and just, I'm not going to make it through this time, and it's just my, my life is ending and whatever. And yet here I am, all these years later. Uh, it's just been a really wild ride, uh, literally. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed that little video here, just sharing some of the scenery of where I grew up and some of the things and, and whatever else there. I know I've talked about it, and probably some of you that have watched a lot of my sermons have been with me for a number of years. Um, you've probably wondered, you know, had, I know people say things and you kind of make mental pictures in your mind of what it would have looked like. Well, this video will probably fill in a lot of the gaps there in your mind and uh, kind of help you to see things a little bit more, um, you know, clearly, you know, the descriptions that I've given and things over the years. Um, but we really thank everybody um, for your prayers. Um, the only mishap we had on the entire trip uh, just to tell a little story here quickly, I did get the uh, ambulance stuck at one point, <laughs> pretty bad in the mud, and trying to back around on my parents' property. It's not a real good lane, and um, I got stuck really bad. And they had to—I tried everything I could to get that thing unstuck. It's only two-wheel drive, so that normally does very good. But when you back it in the mud, you know, not so good. You know, uh, gross vehicle weight on that thing is fourteen thousand five hundred pounds. It's a E450, so it's a super duty and weighs a lot. So not so good, you know, in the mud. You know, so but I I tried to get the thing out and couldn't get it out. So we ended up having to have it pulled out um, by a a big, you know, a, a um, rollback type of deal. Whatever. They had a winch and things on it. And they pulled me right out. It wasn't even that difficult. If I'd had a winch on the front of the ambulance, then I would have been able to get myself out. But that's another story. But. Uh, future plans um, for the thing. Um, not sure yet, but I, I thought it'd be really cool to, to letter it on the side, Hellfire Rescue Truck, you know, and just put John 316 or something. And, um, but we'll, we'll see. I would like, I wanted to have bumper magnets, you know, scriptures and things all over the back part of that ambulance, but uh, it's all aluminum. So my magnets don't, you know, magnets don't stick to aluminum. But, um, but just came back here and, and uh, went to the post office, and there was uh, a lot of letters and two really nice gifts from the brethren and, and uh, to help out the ministry. And, and you know, uh, just really, really appreciate it. Appreciate everybody's, every, everybody's prayer, say it that way. Um, I have some hard times sometimes when I'm driving. I'll kind of start to get a little bit sleepy. I only did, I think, you know, maybe two or three times the entire trip. That entire time. And I was worried about that. I was thinking, you know, don't know how this is going to go driving that many miles. You know, 10, 12 hour days of driving. Just almost nonstop. But thankfully, um, your prayers were really, really there for us. So, really do appreciate everybody's friendship and your support of the ministry. And, uh, I'm going to get back to doing some more preaching and teaching and things, more outdoor sermons. It's getting colder, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, got some interesting plan, plans for the future. But this trip has been, we've been planning on this thing for years, and we know we needed to do the trip, and we were always kind of, when are we going to do it? And, and well, the time finally came, and uh, we did it. And I don't want to do another trip like that for a long time, but <laughs> glad it's done. So... That is going to be it, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.